Hello Taurus, welcome back to my channel. This is Skeleton Key Tarot and this is a tarot card reading for Taurus. All Taurus placements, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Wherever you've got Taurus in your chart or in your life, there's something in this message for you. And as always, cross watchers are welcome here too. So let's begin. Messages for Taurus, please. What does Taurus need to know? We're going to start with some oracles. I've got the love oracle deck and the time oracle deck. So we'll see what's going on in love and like get some idea of the timing of this. Okay. Thank you to my subscribers and my clients for helping me to support this channel and grow this channel. You guys are amazing. I love you so much. It's because of you that I'm able to feed my need for new decks all the time and I just love it so I hope to give back to you something really good from these messages let's just get right into it because uh as much as I want to give you good messages um I have to be honest and tell the truth about what I'm seeing and the first thing that came out of course is toxic relationship <laughs> it's funny not funny right but Okay, let's be serious. Toxic relationship, fighting, codependency, misunderstanding, and triggering. So it's like you guys are triggering each other in this relationship. All right, this relationship is a little bit toxic right now. You're dealing with something here. If this is your message, then this is your story. All right, what else is going on here? We've got the truth, confession, clarity, revealing, and secrets. So there's secrets in this toxic relationship yeah somebody may need to confess or to make something very clear something may be revealed it could just be a misunderstanding it doesn't necessarily have to be secrets it could be like you just you're not communicating very well there's not very good communication between the two of you let's get one more but it could be secrets revealed I mean there's fighting here there's something you're fighting about somebody's wearing a mask yeah Hidden motives, concealing, disguise, lying, okay? So I wanted to be nice about this, right? I wanted to like, oh, maybe it's not that bad, but maybe it is. Maybe it really is. And I said I was just going to get one more, but it's like single, divine timing, and breakup. These three came out together. I felt called to take them. Single, divine timing. So some at some point or another, it's like you two are going to break up. It, eventually, in, in divine timing, the two of you are just going to end up breaking up. You're going to end up walking away from this. It's over. Wrong timing. Stalemate. You know, perfect timing. Waiting. Something about that divine time. I just feel like alone, isolated, lonely, guarded. Like, somebody here is going to end up breaking up with you. Or you're going to end up breaking up with them eventually. Somebody's going to walk away from this. And maybe it's a good thing. Because if the two of you are having such a hard time communicating, you know, getting along somebody's lying the the truth comes out like eventually the truth is going to come out if you don't talk about it or they don't talk about it the universe is going to talk about it for you you know what I mean fated meeting okay there's somebody you're meant to meet there's destiny there's something about this that's destiny predetermined encounter so we also have like the perfect timing here or waiting for the so it's like this is meant to be you were, this is like a karmic relationship. You were meant to be in this relationship and you were meant to walk away eventually. You were meant to have this experience, but there's somebody else that you're destined to meet here. So you're going to break up. You're going to be single and eventually you're going to meet somebody new. And there's a storm warning here, upheaval, obstacle, wrecking ball, drama. So like you're being warned that there's drama here that is already brewing. It's inevitable. It's going to happen. It's destiny and you can't stop it. All right. So cool. Let's, let's keep going. Um, all right. So when let's get some timing, it's not worth waiting for immediately came out. It's not worth waiting for. So somebody has been wasting your time and it's not worth it. If somebody has been wasting your time, it's not worth it. Just like let it go already or something. That's your message. I don't mean to be sarcastic, but it's like it's not it's telling you this is how I feel. This is the this is the energy I'm picking up on. It's just like whatever this is. Maybe somebody's hiding how unhappy they are or 
you know, the fact that they're thinking about walking away, leaving this, but it's not worth waiting for this. It's not worth waiting for them to understand you. It's not worth waiting for them to change. It's not worth waiting for them to get on board and get with the program. You know what I mean? It's not worth it. You'd, you're better off being single and eventually you're going to be single anyway. And then we have September. So the month of September could be important. I love these flowers. These are so pretty. But anyway, this is September. So there could be an important date in September. This could happen in September. This could be meaningful to you. September is also, isn't it? Um, August, September is Virgo. September, October is Libra. So this would be like Virgo Libra season. Okay, you could be dealing with a Virgo or a Libra, or they could have significant Virgo Libra placements in their chart or in yours. And then the last one, we have a special date. So at a special date in September, perhaps on an anniversary or a birthday or something, it's not worth waiting for September. It's not worth waiting for a special date. It's not worth waiting for the perfect timing. Waiting here with divine timing it says wrong timing, stalemate, perfect timing, waiting. It's not worth waiting for September or a special sort of date. But there's something that's going on just around the corner in February or June next year. Which, okay, February of next year could be important or June um, of this year or next year when you let go. All right, so when you let go. And then February could be important for like Valentine's Day. June could be important. It's just around the corner, but it said next year. So by this time next year, what are we at the end of May right now? So June is just around the corner by this time next year or February or something. When you let go, you will meet someone new. You'll be able to get into a new relationship. You'll be able to meet somebody that you're really supposed to be with. That's interesting. That's the message from the oracles. Let's get some tarot. Let's get some tarot. Okay. I'm just going to like put these here and um, I hope that doesn't look too crowded I'll get used to the setup eventually so let's get some tarot what does the tarot have to say for Taurus about this situation this toxic relationship it's not worth waiting for September a special date something has to change you're gonna end up breaking up with this person you're gonna end up walking away from this somebody's wearing a mask they're not being honest it's not worth it. It's not worth waiting for this to change. It's not worth waiting for this to get better. Yeah, single. Single. Nine of pentacles. You're better off alone. You're better off being by yourself. You're better off, ha you know, freeing up your time and space to, in to, I just heard invoke, invoke abundance or invoke, I don't know. To yeah, exactly. The high priestess, the six of pentacles. Guarding your independence, being self-sufficient, especially financially independent, okay? This leads you to success. Spending more time alone, being in your meditative heart space energy, you know what I mean? Being in that feminine space of acceptance and quietude and like meditating on the here and now, breathing, focus on your breathing techniques, that kind of thing. That's what the high priestess really does. She, it's not, wait, it's not exactly what she does that's important here. It's what she is, just being, being conscious and aware being aware of what her intuition is saying, listening to it, trusting your clear perceptions about this. And it's basically saying you're better off alone than waiting for something that's never going to happen or it's just not even worth it. Even if it did, it wouldn't even be worth it. Like you are, you, you've got Virgo here again, Taurus here. It's almost like you're being exalted. You're very intuitive. You're like psychic. You're intuitive. You're spiritual. You're beautiful. You're abundant. You are everything and successful and like you gain so much. Hmm. It's like what's coming towards you is more reciprocal. I feel like you've been giving to a situation that's not been giving back to you or okay, maybe you've been in alignment with toxicity within yourself, inside of yourself, you have also been contributing to this. And because your relationship was coming from a toxic place within you somehow, just hear me out. Like what if it was like the way that you were thinking about relationships in general, your approach to the relationship, your approach to self, your approach to giving and receiving love, 
put you in a position to receive this toxic bullshit relationship that didn't work out. But you've learned something and this was important. You were meant to learn and you now have. And now you are coming into alignment with a much more elevated mindset. You are reframing your understanding of yourself and of love and relationships. And now you are like now you are resonating on a different vibration, a vibrational level. And because you are doing that, you are calling in and attracting and invoking a much more healthier, reciprocal, balanced relationship because it starts within. It starts within yourself. You're no longer going to extremes, okay? You are secure and balanced and serene, at peace within yourself. And so whatever is no longer in alignment with you is going to naturally fall away. If you have evolved, if you have transcended, if you are in touch with your high priestess, nine of pentacles, six of pentacles, Whatever is not in alignment with you is no longer come, going to be in your life. It will fall away. You, you will end up leaving. It will end up leaving your life. Something like that. I just, I get that sense of like, you are aligning yourself with something higher, better, greater, and it's destined and it, it will end up changing your life because you've changed yourself on the inside your life is going to change on the outside. You've also learned something important about manifestation and the magic of manifestation and how that really works, like the law of attraction, that sort of thing. Okay, let's get some more. One more for the top row. Thank you. Four of Pentacles. Yeah. Okay, so there's some structural integrity issues here. This is all about the structure of your life. Look at all these pentacles, by the way. This is about your finances, it's about your lifestyle, it's about your physical health, your wealth, and well-being. And it looks really good. But it's also talking about here you have some kind of structure in your life. And this can be very productive for you. It can give you a solid foundation on which to grow. And so I see you establishing a very solid foundation and being able to grow from there. But we also, when the Four of Pentacles comes up, we have to think about how does this structure inhibit my growth as much as it may support me it also has its limitations so there is something about like the limitations of this lifestyle and making more space for natural growth development of your your intuition or your your human your humanity right because this structure may be artificial and it may give you protection and security, but it also may inhibit your personal development and growth, something like that. So finding a more balanced situation where you are stable, but you are also not inhibited. You are also growing within and above and beyond this. Okay, so I just got the image in my mind because... I have a rose bush. I bought a rose bush and she's still very young and she's still in the pot. Like, so a potted plant, like a house plant, but she's not a house plant. She's an outdoor plant. So she's outside. She's living outside of my studio, but she's still in her, in her pot. But I just got her a bigger pot and eventually she will live in the soil itself. But I wanted to make sure that I'm taking care of her. So I put her in a bigger pot. She's in that pot because it helps her to have that stability, to have that um, almost like isolation. She's sequestered. She's got her own little pot, right, that she lives in. But eventually this is going to get to be too small for her. So she had one and she grew out of it. So I got her a bigger one. But eventually the bigger one's going to be too small for her as well. And when she grows out of that one, I'm going to put her straight into the ground, the soil of the earth. And so she's going to, she's going to outgrow. So it's like you're outgrowing a situation. Yeah, you've outgrown this. All right, let's get some clarifiers, please. Okay, we've got, wow. Wow, this is heartbreaking. The queen of cups, the nine of swords, the 10 of swords, absolutely heartbroken about this. This is not easy. It's not an easy choice. You are seriously feeling wounded. Somebody feels wounded by this. Somebody feels like 
perhaps they are to blame for all of this. They feel guilty or ashamed of what has ever ha whatever has happened here. I want to move this over a little bit, but like, uh, okay, so perhaps there's a need for emotional integrity. Perhaps there's a need to make space for these feelings as well, because just because you've outgrown a situation and you've transcended this and you are transcending it spiritually doesn't mean you're going to judge yourself for what has happened or for how you feel about it. And it doesn't mean that you deny your feelings. Okay, this is about integrating that human part of yourself. This is about acceptance and bringing that into balance. So we're not going to do positive. Uh, we're gonna we're not gonna do toxic positivity where we pretend everything's okay, but we're also not gonna go to the extreme of saying that everything is terrible and bad. You know, either we kind of have both. Like, yes, it's terrible and bad, but also I'm okay, and I'm gonna make space for myself to grow and heal and learn from this. Where I'm not going to condemn or judge myself for having had this experience or wasted this much time or whatever happened between you. Um, but you're also going to recognize that it, it's over and it can't continue and it has to change. This relationship cannot go on in this this form. You have outgrown it. And so whether it's you or the person that you're dealing with, somebody is heartbroken about this and it hurts. It's, it's really terrible. It's not good for your mental health. Okay, this is where the toxicity comes through as well. And so making space for your negative emotions, that's what this is talking about right here with the 10, the nine and the queen of cups here, this 10 of swords, nine of swords, queen of cups. Um, yeah, balance and truth and growth requires that we make space for these negative emotions as we go through them, as we experience this, what may be an upheaval in your life or perhaps a destabilizing event or destabilizing experience here this um this may bring up a lot so again we're like looking at with the ten of swords is like this always says to me how do i participate in my own pain how do i approach it how do i sometimes feed into it and do i with the queen of cups nine of swords here as well do i sometimes identify with my suffering in such a way that if it was to end part of me would end with it and i would have to change my self perception or my self my self concept you know what if being a victim of a situation is a part of my identity what if i have to leave that part of my identity behind or accept that part of myself but no longer identify so strongly with it like maybe maybe this is how you know that you're no longer attached to this or you're no longer in it anymore it's not as heavy on you as when you no longer really identify with it that this is the past and it's over Okay, and right now I'm just living in the now, in the moment, focused on my breath. It's not happening to me right now. I'm sitting quietly alone by myself in my comfortable chair or wherever I am, and this person is not in the room with me. And so if I am continuously thinking about this person or what they said to me or what they did to me or what I did and what I said that I'm not proud of, that I'm ashamed of, if I'm reliving this over and over again, if I'm keeping it alive by reliving it over and over again, then I'm the one now that's feeding into the drama. I'm the one that's now keeping it alive. I'm the one that's now like not able to let it go. So I'm going to observe. This is what you do with this high priestess being here. She's observing. She's observing, she's not analyzing, she's not even using logic or discernment. She's simply allowing and accepting, allowing it to come through, accepting whatever comes through without judgment, and giving herself the space and time to heal and transcend. And also, there's compassion here with the Queen of Cups, loving yourself, having compassion for yourself and others. The more compassion and love that you can show yourself, the more you're capable of showing up in that energy for other people as well. You will have a deeper understanding of suffering in general. You will have more compassion for other people as you develop more compassion for yourself as you go through this transformation. This is important for your spirituality. With the Queen of Cups High Priestess, you're very psychically gifted, you're very empathetic. You you have a psychic gift you're meant to develop and share and it's meant to inform you and to guide you and give you 
you know, a sense of depth and meaning to your life. So this is a necessary, 100% necessary for you in this lifetime to have had this toxic experience with this person, to have ha had these embarrassing, demeaning, undignified moments together, and then to see it again clearly without judgment, not judging them, not judging you. When you get to that space and that place in your life when you're not even judging them anymore, even though you fucking hate them, <laughs> you know what I mean? You kind of fucking hate them, but like at some point or another, you sort of grow through that too. Now you know you've really developed. Now you know you're really mature. You've really made it. Let's get one more. This is about balancing your emotions. This is about emotional self-mastery, but more so it's about emotional self-acceptance and care. Self-care, but emotionally. So it's like, what does that mean? It means you give space, you make space for your, your negative emotions, in this case negative because of the 10 and the 9 of swords, to let them bloom. Feel them deeply. Cry. Give it space. Give it time. Breathe through it. It's okay. You're going to be okay. It's okay. But at some point or another, you will feel it deeply, feel it fully, cry your head out, and then you're going to get up off of the floor and you're going to keep moving. All right? You're going to move forward. I just got to chill. So, but you, you shouldn't deny how you feel about this. You must be authentic about your feelings here. You must. Otherwise, you're just going to keep putting up obstacles. Any sort of resistance in this situation is just going to become another obstacle to your success. So you got to get this out of the way first so that you can manifest your best life. You don't want this to become an obstacle to manifesting your best life. Your best relationship is just around the corner. You don't want this getting in the way anymore. So you've got to go through the motions of bringing it all, all around full circle and, and coming to the place and the point that you're meant to learn, right? Coming to whatever lesson conclusions that you're meant to draw from this experience because it was not for nothing. <laughs> look at what we just, look at this, the hanged man. Are we kidding? No, this is real. Like, seriously, I can't, you can't make this up. So the hanged man comes out. <sighs> I'm like astonished sometimes, even though I've been doing this forever and doing it for years, even before I got on youtube.com, like I am still astonished at how amazing this simple deck of cards really is. Okay, now we have someone with the Knight of Wands at the bottom of the deck, Three of Cups, the, the Knight of Cups. Yeah, so moving forward, you are attracting and coming into alignment with a much better opportunity, a much better loving, romantic relationship. Somebody that's a lot more fun, uplifting, you know, affectionate. But like right now, let's just say the hanged man. You have to let this go. Eventually, you're going to let it go. Eventually, you're going to surrender. You're going to go with the flow. You're going to enter this flow state as you move through this pain and give it, give yourself that acceptance and that compassion and that empathy. And you know, you develop this for yourself. You develop it in re regards to others as well. You will come to a place of acceptance. You will let this go. You will rise above it. You will go into that flow state and you will take the path of least resistance. You will not be stopped by obstacles. You will be redirected by these obstacles. And maybe it's nonlinear. Okay, I was just telling Libra something similar the other day. Path of, I think it was yesterday. Path of least resistance might be even in the title. If you have Libra in your chart or both of you are ruled by Venus. So you may just want to go check that out anyway because that's your like Venusian sister sign okay but like they they had a kind of similar message very different from yours but similar enough where I'd want to mention it because it's non-linear this progress is not going to be a straight line from A to B right it's not going to be a straight line you're going it's going to have many twists and turns and it's not logical it's not rational and that's good that's a good thing the high priestess doesn't need logic and rationality that's your brain that's for your ego that's for the king of swords to deal with you know what i mean that's for the magician to deal with when we're talking about the high priestess and the queen of cups we're talking about the heart space and the heart is connected to the soul and the soul knows a lot more than we do and that's why when we connect with our heart we're listening to our soul and we're bringing in that intuition that knowledge that comes from a higher perspective a much more spiritually tapped in perspective Perspective. And so that's what leads us to seeing this situation in a different way when we surrender and let go. There's nothing you can do. You cannot stop this. You cannot resist this. The more that you resist, the more you're just going to suffer. Allow it to happen. Res resistance is futile. You know what I mean? And it's like, 
Here we had that four of pentacles and underneath it now we have the hanged man. This is the end of a stuck or stagnant situation. This may feel somewhat destabilizing for you, but trust and have faith that this is actually bringing you into a faded encounter. This is necessary for your growth. You will meet somebody new. You will be in a new relationship. It's just around the corner, February, June, next year, whatever. But it's like, this has to happen. And, and if this is your story then this is your message let go relax release the tension from your muscles feel your emotions feel your heart listen to your intuition of course this is leading you to a place of increased self-sufficiency and increased self-confidence especially when it comes to your emotions your emotional authenticity your emotional integrity your emotional self-expression self um what is it that i just heard that was a good one loyalty to yourself like okay being loyal being authentic to your own emotions yeah expressing your emotions freely truly and openly and this makes you beautiful this this your openness and emotional vitality makes you beautiful this is a source of radiant love and light and this is not something to be ashamed of or to you know because people might not understand you but that's not your problem that's not even it's not even the point that you don't need that that's not even the, you understand you you get you okay and you love you just the way that you are there's nothing you have to do you don't have to explain it you shouldn't even try to don't even bother trying you don't have to you don't have to tell anybody I mean you can you can if you want to I'm not saying don't I'm just saying like you don't have to you don't have to explain. You don't have to justify. All right. You don't even have to deceive anybody. You don't have to hide it, but you don't have to put it out there either. And there's some part of this that's just for you. You you can do your best. You can put you can put it into words if you want to write a poem. But it's it's not verbal. It's non-verbal. Whatever this is with the high priestess, the queen of cups, etc. This is like non-verbal communication style. Like this is just pure firsthand experience of your intuitive heart space soul connection and the spiritual messages that are coming from the universe straight to you that you are hearing and it's meant just for you so you are maybe having some kind of you've had some kind of premonition or you may have some kind of premonition of this there may be some kind of psychic prediction or or like an omen of some kind or a synchronicity of some kind that it's going to be so personalized to you and it'll make total sense to you you will definitely Definitely recognize it when you see it you will absolutely know 100% that this was the message that this was for you and you could try to explain it to other people you could say oh my gosh did you see that hummingbird I know what that means that's my spirit guides telling me to go you know what I mean to do this to do that oh this this sequence of numbers oh 0514 I know those numbers those numbers have a specific special meaning to me this is how I know you know something like that or like a dream you have a dream it's very specific to you is what I'm trying to say and this is going to come through for you and it will be proven right and true and this in again is going to re um redouble or reinforce yeah reinforce your sense of psychic perception and you will have even more increased confidence in your own ability to decipher these messages and that these messages are real and that they are true and you are living in synchronicity you are in alignment but you've got to let go of something okay in the end with the hanged man here you must let go you must surrender give it up give up you are not in control and that's okay don't try to control it it's going to be a little bit scary and so you might try to grasp or cling all right but you're being told not to don't try to fix this let it go let it fall away if this is going to be an upheaval like we saw in the beginning okay it might get a little scary but you're going to be okay you are protected but you are outgrowing this situation let it go and let yourself grow all right, that's what I've got. Yeah, someone's going to come towards you. Someone's planning on coming towards you with some kind of romantic offer, by the way. You might, yeah, this is going to change your life. Yeah, King of Cups. This is a, a much more emotionally um, uh, compatible partner in the future. You might not know this yet, but you're going to end up meeting this person or being with this person. Um, yeah, the hermit, there may be, like I said, Virgo, but this is somebody who's very emotionally intelligent, also very spiritual, mature, Um 
loving, understanding, kind, soft, compatible with the Queen of Cups, that King of Cups. So you can look forward to that if that helps you to let something go because you you must right now let this go. All right, that's what I've got for you today, Taurus. I hope this was helpful. I hope this was of service to you. If you enjoyed this and you'd like a personal reading, my email is in the description box below. You can email me. I'll let you know how it works. You let me know what you need. But in any case, I just wanna say thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you in the next one, okay? Bye.